So ASTM F96317 is a toy safety standard, which is also referenced by the CPSIA, which, well, makes it de facto mandatory, okay? Now, it covers various aspects of product safety. One of the more obvious is um, chemicals and, and heavy metals restrictions. Usual suspects, it set restrictions for phthalates, I think they cover phthalates, lead, cadmium and so on, meaning that in order to ensure compliance with this standard, your product, or more specifically the materials of the children's product, cannot contain restricted substances above the set limit. So that's, that's number one, okay? Very similar to say CA Prop 65 or, or REACH in the EU. The second thing you have to consider in order to ensure compliance with this standard is something called mechanical and physical properties. Now this is referring to the design, the construction of the product. It covers things like sharp points, edges, sound design practices. And in this standard you can actually find technical examples and, and, and data, uh, even visual guides showing you what you need to take into consideration when you design the toy, because that's really what this comes down to. You can't really have ASTM F963 as an, uh, as an afterthought if, if you are actually launching, a, a, or you are selling children's products in the US. No, you need to buy this standard on the ASTM website today, and you need to apply the uh, mechanical properties or the guidelines and the technical requirements at the very, at, at, at the very well, at step one, at the drawing board. You see, because let's say that you would, if you don't take these mechanical, let's say these design, uh, safe design aspects into consideration when you're designing the product, well, you might put a product to production that is inherently unsafe by design, okay? So when it comes to ASTM F963, simply not enough to, to treat it as, okay, we'll do testing just before shipment or something like that. No, you gotta go to the ASTM website, buy the standard, and, and then you have to have to look at the technical examples you can find in this standard, which is a PDF file, by the way. I think you can buy a hard, hardcover version, but uh, in any case, and, and then implement that uh, into your technical documentation, okay? Um, because that's, again, you know, otherwise you might end up with a product that is inherently non-compliant by design uh, with the mechanical and the physical properties, which is the second part. Other than that, this, there are also provisions covering electrical safety. I'm not going to go in, into detail, uh, but it also covers certain aspects such as batteries. I think that is, 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 is related to uh, battery lead protection and so on. Another very big part of, of CPSIA and also ASTM F963 is, is that of small parts. And you can find a, a pretty detailed guide on the, uh, the CPSC website. Um, you can also find, um, well, you can find examples and, and, and also the technical compliance requirements in the standard. But what small parts really refer to is that a children's product, at least for certain age groups, I think from newborns up to three-year-olds, cannot contain small parts. And the way that they determine if it's a small part depends on, well, they have... Uh, cylinders that 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 is is meant to um um to simulate um a throat in 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 a young child right and it really comes down to dimensional requirements but it's not just about loose parts it's also parts that could be broken off or bitten off um and and of course you know that's something we absolutely have to take design in, into consideration and 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 from the perspective of the fact that you're selling a pro designing a product for children and usage by children must, this should go without saying, but must of course be taken into consideration. And that's also something that you will find in, in, in the PDF version of ASCM F963, okay? This is of course closely related to what I just mentioned about me mechanical properties, right? That is also flammability. I don't know anything about the exact requirements, so you're gonna have to check the standard for that. Another thing to take that's that's a very big part is um, warning labels and uh, warning symbols and, and the specific text that you can use 
for different types of toys. If I remember correctly, they, they provide examples for, for various types of toys uh, and you can use some of those and well, you may need to tweak them, but they provide a very good starting point um, for warning labels that tend to go on the packaging, right? So I, I think, I think you've, you've seen these and I think many of them actually come from ASTM F963. So another big point is, is, is testing. So as I mentioned, this standard is referenced by CPSAA, which in turn uh, makes lab testing mandatory according to all mandatory, well, uh, according to the applicable ASTM, sorry, F9, uh, ASTM standards. And that goes, uh, I think, well, it goes beyond um, ASTM F963 because as you might know, CPSAA is for all children's products, not just toys. So if it would be, say, um, a baby carrier or something like that, well, maybe you would, uh, maybe there are certain aspects of, of this standard you would apply, but uh, I believe there are also other standards and rules to take into consideration. But in any case, if you're selling toys, then uh, you can be quite certain that F963 testing is, is, is mandatory. And it's not just mandatory, but when you get your product tested according to ASTM F96317, it must be done by a CPSC accepted testing company. You can find a database on the CPSC website, okay? So you can type in based on product type, I think, and, and also based on the country. These labs don't necessarily have to be based in the US. There are um, CPSC accepted labs in, in China, in Europe and so on. So not necessarily, it's not really about the uh, geographic location, but they have to be on that list so they, that that test report is not recognized. Because keep in mind, at the end of the day, you also need to not just get it lab tested, but you would also need to issue a children's product certificate where you again need to specify which ASTM standards your product was tested according to, which would include F96317, if it's for toys at least. And you also have to provide information um, about the lab that, that did the testing. So that's the way it works. There's no way to, to go around that. In any case, if you have questions about ASTM F963, then you can write a comment on our YouTube channel or directly uh, on our website in the relevant article. If you want more videos, you can also subscribe. But if you want technical information about this standard, uh, then you have to go to ASTM.org. I, I think that's the website anyway. You type in F96317 and you can buy it. I think it's like 99 or yeah, $100, something like that. Uh, so that, that's my recommended next step uh, if you are at a design stage and you need to make sure that you are incorporating the elements of this standard. Anyway, thank you for watching this video.